On the 8th of September 2022, the news came from Balmoral Castle that Queen Elizabeth II had died. I wonder what your reaction was to hearing that news. A sense of grief, a sense of loss, a sense even of bewilderment. She's been described as a, a rock, an anchor, a constant in an ever-changing and often chaotic world. She meant a great deal to us as a nation and it seems so strange to think that she has gone. And I want to speak to you just very briefly today about her life, a life of service. It was my privilege to work at Buckingham Palace in the private secretary's office for a brief period uh, after university, two and a half years before my wife and I got married. And it was one of the greatest honours of my life to work there. It was fascinating to see the royal household in operation close up and to be part of it. And yet, of course, I wasn't interacting uh, with the Queen personally, but I did see her on a number of occasions. And I have one particular memory that stands out. Every Christmas, the royal household staff would be given a Christmas party. Uh, the first year I was there, it was at Windsor Castle. The second year, it was at Buckingham Palace. And I can distinctly remember uh, the Queen coming to visit uh, the party. And other members of the royal family had been in the room and had visited um, various members of the household staff and walked through and talked to people. But when the Queen herself came into the room, there was this hush this hush that descended on, on the crowd, hundreds of people there at the party. And she slowly and gracefully made her way through uh, the crowd and a way parted for her uh, through the crowd. And there was this sense of awe, a sense of awe around her. This was the Queen, the Queen herself. She was a very special, a very unique uh, lady indeed. Her life was a life of duty. Her life was a life of consistency. It was a life of good humour. It was a life of influence. But most of all, I would like to highlight today that her life was a life of service. On her 21st birthday, she broadcast a message, uh, not knowing at that time that she would shortly be queen. And she said this, I declare before you all, that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service. I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service. Little did she know, little did she know that in just four years she would be the queen and in just another couple of years she would be crowned publicly as the queen of the United Kingdom. And her whole life, indeed, a very long life, would be devoted, would be dedicated to the service of her nation. She lived a life of dedicated service. She has not belonged to herself. She has belonged to us as a nation. And from my time working there, I can tell you that her schedule was still a gruelling one, even just a few years ago. Uh, not just visits and travel. Uh, but study um, and preparation um, for all sorts of, of duties that lay before her. She was probably uh, the only lady in her 90s who had homework uh, every weekend uh, with her red box and all that she would have to uh, read and to look over. A remarkable lady by all accounts. She lived a life that was dedicated to serving her nation. She was... The Queen during the uh, time in office of 15 Prime Ministers, numerous Presidents. Her first Prime Minister was born in 1874. She spanned history, didn't she? And she came to embody so much of what we feel about ourselves as a nation in the United Kingdom. She means so much to people and that is why there is this outpouring of grief. And as the days unfold and the funeral arrangements are um, announced and um, all the, ceremon the ceremonial aspects of the, the coming days uh, will take place. We will see just how much she meant 
uh, to us as a nation. She did all of this, countless visits, meeting uh, hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of people and showing a genuine interest in their lives and in the matters um, that concerned them. She did all of this uh, in spite of, of difficulties in her own family life and personal loss and tragedy. She faced it all with constancy and with a determination to fulfil that vow of devoted service, a thoroughly unselfish life. You could look at the life of Queen Elizabeth II and ask, how? How did she live this sort of life? How did she live this sort of devoted, unselfish life of dedicated service? Where did she draw her strength from? There are a number of quotes we could draw out from her Christmas messages. One I want to highlight just now is from her Christmas message in 2002. And she said this, being very personal. I know just how much I rely on my own faith to guide me through the good times and the bad. And later she said, I draw strength from the message of hope in the Christian gospel. I draw strength from the message of hope in the Christian gospel. At the heart of the Christian gospel is Jesus Christ himself. Gospel means good news and in days of bad news and we've had the sad and tragic news of the Queen's passing, there is good news. There is good news, good news that she herself believed in. And it's all about Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 20 and verse 28, we read about him. He says these, own, these words about himself. The Lord Jesus said, The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Yes, the Queen lived a life of dedicated service. But here we read about the Saviour about the king that she bowed before, the Son of Man. That was one of the terms that the Lord Jesus most often used about himself, the Son of Man, came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Bible clearly teaches that we are all separated from God because of our sin, those things that we do and say and think that are wrong and sinful. And the price for this sin, the Bible makes clear, is death. And yet God in his love, in his astounding, magnificent love, has provided a way for sinful men and women to be saved and forgiven of all of their sins. He has provided a ransom. And that ransom took place at the cross. The Lord Jesus Christ, the perfect, <clears throat> spotless Son of God, left the glory of heaven and came down and lived amongst us in this world of sin and darkness. And he went all of the way to the cross, and there at the cross he died. Many people in our nation today know that Jesus Christ died, but few know why. Why did he die on the cross? He didn't die on the cross simply to show us an example of perfect love, although it is that. He didn't die to pay for a cause that he believed in. He didn't die to pay for crimes that he himself had committed. He died to pay this ransom price for sin. He died to satisfy the righteous demands of God. He died to pay the price you and I deserve to pay. I wonder if you're ready for the end of life. The Queen was ready. She was ready to go into heaven trusting in Jesus Christ for her personal salvation. I wonder if that's the case for you today. Uh, whoever you are listening and watching uh, to this video today, are you ready for the day when your life will end? The only way that you can be ready is the same way that Queen Elizabeth II was ready, and that is through placing your personal faith and trust in Jesus Christ. He died, and yet he rose again, and he lives today. Jesus Christ is alive today, and he is still offering salvation to anyone who will believe in him. Place your faith and trust in Christ. And when you do, he will give you the power to live a life of devoted service to him. Thank you.